The Boston Red Sox have their first series win in June, and it was all on the backs of their young starting pitchers. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin, and after a bit of a boring extra innings game last night, the Boston Red Sox officially beat the Yankees in a three-game series, taking two out of three games, and that was their first series win of the month of June, and their first series win dating back to when the Cincinnati Reds series started on May 30th. And obviously, the biggest part of this series was the Red Sox pitching staff, specifically the youngest members of the Red Sox pitching staff. So what we are going to do in today's video is we're going to break down this latest Red Sox series. We're going to talk about all the Red Sox highlights, what went right. We'll talk about what went wrong. And we're going to talk about why what the starters were able to do in this series is so important to the future of the Boston Red Sox. But before we get into that, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. Obviously, with the star of this video being the starting pitching for the Red Sox, we have to start there. And we're going to start in game one, which saw Garrett Whitlock take the bump. And in Garrett Whitlock's start, he ended up going six and a third innings, allowing seven hits, but only one earned run and one walk while striking out six batters. What is most interesting about Whitlock's start to me is that he relied heavily on his sweeper as sort of his put out pitch, which lately has been more of his changeup. Over the last couple of starts, he's been using his sinker and his changeup to get batters out. This start, he was using a lot of sinker sweeper, which is interesting, but hey, either way you cut it, if it's working, it's working, and it worked for Garrett Whitlock in this start because he looked awesome awesome the next thing in my opinion for Garrett Whitlock that he needs to work on is just simply consistency right it feels as though as a starter Whitlock has been a bit all over the place if he can get to a point where he's allowing four or less runs every single start he will be in a great place and it'll be in a great place for this Red Sox team in the second game which was the only loss of this series we saw Tanner Houck and this loss had nothing to do with Tanner Houck who was able to go six innings allowing just two earned runs on three total hits unfortunately two of those hits were a home run he only walked one singular batter and struck out six it was a really great performance and again unfortunately it just happened to be pitching in yankee stadium so it really should have only been one earned run but it's funny how close to the same boat him and whitlock are both are, have such massive upside and such massive talent both have struggled to find consistency in the rotation but this was a really fantastic start one thing i really love about tanner how is that he's really trying to get through those middle innings obviously they've been a true thorn in his side the entire year where he struggled in that fourth fifth and sixth inning but in this outing he only allowed one earned run in the fourth and one earned run in the sixth so he really did have a really great outing in terms of the middle innings of this game and in general it was just a fantastic start overall finally to wrap this series up we got brian bayo bump day and he ended up going seven innings which ties his career high he allowed just three hits two earned runs and those two earned runs may be the most lucky run we have seen all season a soft ground ball off of the second base bag how often does that happen in baseball it really only happens to brian bayo who i feel like is the most unlucky pitcher on this staff he did walk two batters and only struck out three but overall it was just a masterful performance from brian bayo he had hitters off balance all game long and like we talked about when chris sale went down bayo's a guy who really is going to have to step it up unfortunately right we wanted this guy to sort of be low leverage get used to the big leagues really figure his stuff out at the major league level now he's got to step it up a bit with Chris Sale out and that's exactly what he did in this start so like I said three games in this series three really strong performances from really young pitchers in this Red Sox pitching staff and to me this was the most exciting part of the series there wasn't a whole lot of offense which we'll talk about in a second so the starting pitching really was the reason we ended up winning this series all of these guys were able to go pretty deep into the game all of these guys were able to throw a pretty decent performance and yes you are looking at a bit of a lackluster Yankees offense with no Aaron Judge and Anthony Rizzo who ended up being in a bit of a slump coming into this series but either way regardless of who you are facing for these three guys to come out here and pitch the way they did was huge for this Red Sox team not just in this series but for the future of the club as well because right now what you're looking at is a rotation with three homegrown stars if you include Garrett Whitlock in there as well that's four that's four homegrown pitchers that's something the Red Sox really haven't had in a very very long time so to see these guys starting to develop and starting to get better with Tanner Howe 
help working on middle innings with Garrett Whitlock trying to figure out how to get batters out with swing and misses as opposed to weak contact with Brian Bayo still developing into a top line starting pitcher. These are things that should be getting you excited about the future of this Red Sox team and one of the biggest right now is the fact that the Red Sox pitching rotation has a ton of homegrown talent in it. Something again we have not seen in a while. So overall when looking at this series as a whole by far and away the most important part of it to me going forward this season and going forward into the next couple of seasons is the fact that the Red Sox young starters are settling into their roles and pitching the way that we know they can pitch. As for the bullpen in this series it was really really good. There was only one earned run allowed by the entirety of the bullpen in this entire series. It was Brennan Bernardino. Once again we have to tip our cap to Nick Pavetta who looks fantastic out of the bullpen so far. In 12 and two thirds innings Nick Pavetta has just a 2.84 ERA and opponents have just a 55 OPS plus off of him. Now I don't know if this has something to do with the uptick in velocity out of the bullpen. I don't know if his stuff just simply plays better out of the bullpen but he's gotten some big innings lately and he's been able to capitalize on it. Another guy who really deserves some love out of the Red Sox bullpen is Chris Martin. He has been consistently great out of this bullpen since coming back from the IL. He was absolutely fantastic in this series, shutting the door in the 10th inning of the third game, coming in in a big spot in the eighth inning of the first game. Chris Martin is one of, if not the most consistent pitcher for the Red Sox out of the bullpen so far this year. Kenley Jansen also deserves some love when we're talking about the bullpen. He had two really masterful performances in this one, one to get a save in the first game and the other one to push the game into extra innings in the ninth inning of the last game. Kenley Jansen, who struggled a bit over the last couple of weeks, has been absolutely fantastic over his last couple of outings, and that's huge for the Boston Red Sox. Overall, one more time, the pitching in this series really, really was a masterclass of pitching. With Chris Sale out for the next two months at the bare minimum, we talked about how important it is for the rest of this rotation and honestly the rest of this pitching staff to step their game up. And that's exactly what we saw from three young, talented pitchers in this one. And it gets me super excited for what the future of Red Sox pitching could look like. As for the offense in this series, it fell a bit flat, which has been an issue over the last couple of series. But at least there were some highlights in this one. Rafael Devers is by far and away the biggest highlight of this series. It appears as though he just needed to face his son, Garrett Cole, to get his groove back a little bit. In this series, he had two home runs, one off of Garrett Cole and one in the second game. He also had a double off of Garrett Cole. He had a hit in all three games, and he just looks much better at the plate. Hopefully, this is where he gets his mojo back and starts taking off because we talk about it all the time. This offense is centered around Rafael Devers, so when he's slumping, it feels like the rest of the team is as well. Justin Turner had another really great series here at the plate. He's putting together really great at bats. He ended up going five for 11 with a home run in this series. One of the more impressive things about Turner in this one is that he only struck out one singular time in the entire series and the old man was able to swipe a bag as well. All around a great series for Justin Turner, which I feel like is something we've been saying over the last couple of series. Justin Turner is just a consistent, really, really professional hitter and he's absolutely fantastic in the middle role of this lineup. After that, Kike Hernandez had a home run in this series too. He had three hits in total, but they felt like every single hit was super clutch. His home run was the go-ahead and eventual winning run in the first game. He had two singles in the rest of the series. One ended up being the game tying run. He got on base and then ended up getting to second on an error and tying the game. And the other one was a game winner in extras. He also looked really good on defense. Kike may be the highest of highs, and the lowest of lows player that we have seen in a really long time in a Red Sox uniform. Thankfully, in this series, it was more highest of highs than it was lowest of lows. Tristan Costas had a really nice game in this series where he got to Cole a couple of times, one for an RBI. Costas is officially hitting over 200 on the season, and early on here in June, he has a 131 OPS plus, the highest of his career so far. He just continues to improve month by month, and I wouldn't be shocked by the end of this month to see Tristan Costas' average sitting somewhere in the low 230s 235 236 because he's been hitting the ball really well and really hard all over the place in the last couple of weeks jaron ran also had a nice game in here in the finale here he went two for four with a double and an rbi and you could start to see him make some adjustments and use pitcher strategies against them which is awesome right jaron duran has been struggling for a while now if he can make those in 
season adjustments, it's going to say a lot as to what his place going forward on this Red Sox team may look like. But after that, there really wasn't a ton. Those were all the RBIs in this series, and the Red Sox once again fell a bit flat, especially with runners in scoring position. Yes, they were able to win this series, but they were also just two for 16 with runners in scoring position and left 22 men on base. They simply just could not get the big hits all series. They got enough big hits, but they couldn't really capitalize on the production of guys getting on base, which they're still doing. They're still getting on base. They're still creating traffic on the base pass. The difference between now and what we were seeing in April and the beginning of May is that they aren't driving these guys in, and it's still a big problem going forward, and they're just kind of lucky that the starting pitching did so well in this series. Now, if the starting pitching continues to pitch like this, then yeah, maybe they do only have to score three or four runs a game, but that's probably not the case, and you're going to need that offensive prowess back at some point. Hopefully, this is the sort of launching point for which they can come back and really start to hit the ball again. They're coming back to Fenway, so that should help. They're facing the Rockies. That should help, but we really need to see this offense kick back into gear, and again, I think a lot of that's going to have to do with Rafael Devers, who looked really great in this series, so hopefully if he can get his mojo back and get going again, the rest of the offense will follow suit, but overall, again, this wasn't a great series for the offense. They still were able to win the series and win two games, so I'm not going to be super hard on the offense, but it just does simply need to be better going forward. Overall, this was a really decent series for the Red Sox. They won a lot of close games against the New York Yankees in the Bronx. The Yankees are the third best team in this division. They were able to take two out of three from these guys. There are still a lot of things the Red Sox need to improve on, but they stopped the skid a little bit. Hopefully, this is, again, a platform that they can use to jump off of and get back to to what they were when they were hitting really, really well and they were playing really, really good baseball. Hopefully, this is the jumping point for that. Overall, again, the month of June, we talk about it all the time, is super important to the success of the Boston Red Sox. This is their first series win in June, so they really, really need, need to step up the pace over the next couple of weeks to get themselves back comfortably over 500 and hopefully back into fighting at least a little bit for a wild card spot. But that's just my opinion, so let me know in the comment section down below. What did you think of this latest Red Sox series? What did you think about the starting pitchers? What did you think about the lackluster offense? And what did you think about the Red Sox taking two out of three from the New York Yankees? Let me know all your thoughts on the latest Red Sox series in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the red seats.